Welcome everyone, this is Toy Nuts. I'm at the Me and the Flea Flea Market here in Springdale, Arkansas. Gonna do a quick fig hunt and I figured bring you guys along. I'll put all the uh, contact information and their phone numbers and uh, address and everything down below in the description area. Uh, right off the bat, looking pretty good. We got some video games in the front display case as we just come in. To the right of the uh, main entrance is this one booth, one of my favorite booths in this place. Uh, all he deals in is old classic video games, uh, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, and of course, early PlayStation, Xbox games. Uh, prices are pretty reasonable on a lot of things. Uh, I have picked up several of my Genesis games from this guy. Um, never really had an issue with any of the games and everything, but I do see him in that. He's pretty cool to talk with. And he usually keeps this pretty well stocked. walk out of his booth um he's just now taking over this one corner here uh, but yeah he's a like i said really cool booth and we'll head down the first aisle and of course Every flea market has to have their Hot Wheels, and this is uh, one of the main booths here with a bunch of Hot Wheels stuff. Uh, this flea market is very hit and miss, but I've had lots of, when I hit, I really hit pretty good in here um, for geek things, you know. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good flea market. It's something, I mean, I always try to hit at least, if not every other week, at least once a month. Um, yeah, because like I said, uh, the vendors usually try to keep it stocked pretty good, and the selection of stuff is a pretty good mix of, uh, you know, geek collectible toys, games, and things like that. And of course, you got your standard generic flea market stuff, but yeah. Uh, this is a pretty good booth. For a while, they were very overpriced on things, but uh, I think he's learned, and uh, a lot of their prices are actually not bad right now. Then we come down to the end of the hall and you can head down this way. They also have this little back room over here. Oh, display case. These are pretty new. They haven't been here before, so that's cool to see. But they got this little back room over here. And again, this is another hit and miss area. You just got to keep your eye out on everything because it's constantly changing in the back room here. And this glass display cabinet here. Uh, prices are a little high, but some interesting things. Um, it's okay. Nothing for me, though, really, yeah, especially at some of these prices. I caught this, uh, caught my eye here. It's a, a bag of parts for an old game called Crossbows and Catapults. Ah, I don't know what's all missing. I mean, I remember the game. It was pretty cool, a little D&D based uh, type. Uh, would be fun, but eh, not at that price right now. We'll wait and maybe if they'll put a sale, I might come back and get that. As we leave the back room, we're back into the uh, main store. Uh, lots of videos here. This display cabinet, the guy that owns this, he 
He has some interesting things every once in a while, but unfortunately his prices are all over the board. Um, but he has some pretty cool figures in there. And if he has a sale or something, some of the things are really worth picking up, but others, uh, he just prices them a on the extreme high end. I mean, if they were mint 100% complete, he'd probably be right on the money, but yeah, loose figures, especially when he comes to his GI Joes and that, I mean, yeah. But, you know, you are got to expect that from flea markets. But like I said, it's pretty cool to see what he's got. Head up the second aisle here, and of course, uh, the new thing that's starting to uh, take over a bunch of flea markets in this area is there will be at least one or two booths with nothing but squishmallows and those new plushes like that. So, but uh, this guy, pretty much all old cards, comic books, and records and things. This is a pretty cool booth. If you want to kill some time, look through some books and things, you can find some cool things in here. We'll head down to the third aisle here. This booth, uh, they pretty much try to clear out uh, clearance sections and everything, but they do have some, I found lots of park items in here, you know, Disney park items. So I always have to check this booth and look pretty good just in case they got some more uh, park items that I don't have and they're at pretty good prices. And this is one of the main anime booths. It's changed around. They now have uh, some lounge fly bags and things. And of course, the Fungo Pops. Everybody's gotta have Fungo Pops. And at the end of the uh, third aisle here, there's this one booth here. They sometimes have some interesting things. Prices are usually a little high. They're now getting more and more Pokemon cards in. Um, don't really collect them, so can't tell you if the prices are crazy or not. Probably are looking at some of his uh, other Star Wars and action figures, as you can see in this display case here. But he does have some pretty good ones. He has park exclusives. Um, the, the old Vader case, the lunch boxes look cool. He's got the uh, BB-8 sipper from the park for five, which is really a pretty good deal. But we'll go up the next aisle here.
And this booth has been here for a while. His stuff always is changing in and out. And again, he's another one that prices are all over the board. Um, it seems he will drop it down though if things aren't selling. Um, he's getting more and more pops. He used to be lots of loose figures and vehicles and things like that. He's had this Naboo Starfighter there for just about forever. Uh, but he wants like way too much for it and it's missing just way too much stuff. But yeah, I have found some pretty good things here um, with his loose figures and that. Uh, sometimes he has some really good ones and they're hidden. So you got to dig through. He's got a couple of the Shang-Chi Marvel Legend figures loose. Um, they're not 100% complete. They are missing some accessories and things, but I mean, he's got them for like eight bucks a piece, which isn't bad, but I mean, I already got them, so no need to buy extras. Uh, this is a new booth. Um, looks like it's a carryover of the uh, guy with all the video games. I'm thinking this is uh, some of his other non-video game stuff. We got a bunch of old comics here. Lots of, uh, yeah, late 80s, early 90s uh, that you usually see from the dollar bins and everything. But yeah, then some extra toys and things and a couple of more video games. But yeah, this is a booth I'm going to have to keep an eye on. Hopefully... Uh, We'll get some really cool things in and then the last main aisle of the store is right over here this one usually is just pure old typical uh what you think of flea market stuff old furniture uh knickknacks and clothes and things like that i've occasionally gotten lucky over in this aisle but it's not usually a, anything cool And that's the main part of the flea market. But they do have this section. They've opened it up within the last year or two here. Um, there's no real booth set up. I mean, you just walk left, right, and that, you know, to move around the little booths and everything. Uh, there's pretty some, some pretty cool items back here every once in a while. But there is one dealer over here that uh, I like to hit his section of the uh, back room. And I'll take you over there in a second as we look through the rest of the place here. What's interesting, I guess this guy uh, was able to pick up a couple of these uh, Lego displays and now he's wanting about a hundred bucks for each of them. Uh, I don't see anything fun with that. I mean, the fun about having the Legos is putting them together and modifying them and playing around with them. Don't really need displays.
And then this is the one section I was saying I like visiting uh, for because this guy has a pretty cool booth. He has all those albums. This is his like housewares and everything. And it's slowly being crept into with some of his uh, action figures and non uh, normal stuff, if you will. He's got his comics right here. And then like I said, directly across, this is where he keeps all his action figures. Pricing and everything, he's, uh, he's very hit and miss. Uh, mostly misses. Uh, he prices them pretty high, but it, he is smart enough to know, or, you know, he'll put them on sale when things aren't moving. He'll do sales, mark them down, have a special, you know, to get rid of the stuff. So it does rotate th through uh, his inventory pretty good. But like I said, when he first puts it in, I mean, and he'll let the stuff sit there and it's sometimes is priced a little too high. But, you know, that's typical what you'd be expecting from a flea market anyways. And I mean, for example, the uh, tank here, it's a G.I. Joe vehicle. It's pretty hard to find, but he's missing all the main pieces. I mean, at least he has the, the, the three rockets here. Um, he's got two of the hatch covers. Looks like all the bogeys and all that are there, the back covering. But he's missing that top turret. There's a little gun there. And then uh, the radar dish. And I mean, yeah, that... The price he's asking for, that should be, you know, 100% complete. And for his Hurricane here, yeah, looking at that price, I mean, for how badly it's discolored, but it does have all, well, yeah, most of the missiles and everything, and it does not have the driver. So, yeah, like I said, he's a little high on a lot of things. I'll keep an eye out if he drops those down. Same thing with the... Uh, Stealth Fighter Bomber from the uh, Joe line here. At least he has the figure, but he's asking for over 100 for it, and it's missing the hardest piece to find, that nose tip. Yeah. Uh, like I said, he's, it's pretty good on some things, uh, a little crazy on some of the others. And then he's got a display cabinet here, and this rotates stock in and out constantly. No rhyme or reason why a lot of this stuff's in here. Um, now it's all seems to be Star Wars. So, I mean, yeah, like I said, I, it's hard to tell why he does what he does with some of his uh, display cabinets. But, yeah, it's fun to look at. All right, so that's pretty much uh, the me and the flea flea market here. It's located in Springdale, Arkansas. Again, I'm going to put the address and 
all the store information in the uh, description down below. But the video's not over yet. There is another store right down the road from this. It's a little, much smaller flea market, but again, sometimes I have some pretty good luck there. So we'll head on over to that one. All right, right down the road, also in Springdale, Arkansas, is this top drawer flea market. And in the main display cabinet here, this one booth, they usually have a lot of big Legos and uh, play sets and some action figures in that right now. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot, but he has some pretty cool things and prices are usually really good. And this one is also another one that's pretty much 90% all classic-y flea mark type stuff. Uh, plates, dishes, things like that. There's only like one or two, sometimes three booths that have stuff that, for me, the toys and the geeky stuff. But it is starting to improve. Uh, this uh, section of the store here, these are all new in the display case. This used to be nothing but fine china and everything. Now we're seeing uh, Maginex, Hero Clicks, and some other cool things. So that's going to be pretty cool. And they moved all the art and everything over to this one section. That's interesting to see. Uh, this usually is all crystals and things like that. But again, that's starting to change. And this booth is uh, changing out. It looks like hopefully we're gonna have a toy dealer in here, so I'll have to keep an eye on this one.
And then this uh, one of the cool booths in here. This guy is another uh, dealer of uh, older systems, older games and everything. And they've got a bunch of anime stuff and that. This is uh, the one of the main booths I always come in here to check because you can find some really good deals with this one. And then they have this little upstairs section here. Uh, this one, it's constantly uh, stock is changing out. So it's always a surprise on what you're going to be finding up here. And it, again, just like any other flea market, I guess, if you will, it's all hit and miss and your good luck timing. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the video here to showing you the end of the uh, top drawer flea market here in Springdale, Arkansas. I will put the information for me and the flea and the top drawer flea markets in the uh, descriptions down below. And before we close out the video, I'm gonna show you what I was able to pick up at the two flea markets today. Wasn't much, but I was able to find this Brutus the Barber Beefcake Elite figure. 100% complete and really great condition. And for a steal of a song, he usually goes for 20. Got him for a little under 12 bucks. And then my big score is the Galaxy's Edge Build-A-Droid BB-8 unit. Um, radio controlled, able to be used through the uh, Galaxy's Edge app and everything. And I got this guy for less than half the price of what it costs in the park to build. So thanks for watching the video. Please hit that like and subscribe. And of course, as always, Excelsior!